Hello. Today I thought I'd show you how to make a fun uh, zippered purse or pouch, whatever you want to call it, um, starting out with some pre-cut 10 inch squares. And I thought that would be um, a good way of using up some leftover 10 inch squares. If you've had a project and you've got a couple left over, you might want to make a little zippered pouch. So these are really fun to make. They're not hard. They're quick. They're easy. They make great gifts. Um, you can use, as I said, some of the pre-cut ones or I've cut my own. So what you need to make one pouch is one zipper. So these are 10 inch squares. The zipper I'm suggesting be at least a 14 inch. Um, we just It's much easier to work if you've got some extra length to work with. And you need a 10 inch square of something that you're going to have inside the lining fabric, a 10 inch square of a batting, uh, which I'm suggesting be a thin one. I've used a cotton, which works really well. And then of course a 10 inch square for the outside. So initially, if we just lay our batting down and then lay our nice outside square on top with the right side up and then lay the lining square on top of that right side down so that they're right sides together. It probably doesn't matter with the black but it might if you've got a printed fabric. So if you lay them right sides together and then on two opposite edges just do your quarter inch seam, just a regular quarter inch seam so that, that is sealed and then turn that out the right way and press that seamed edge and then just do a quarter inch um, sti uh, top stitch along there. Like I've done here, I've already done that part so that you didn't have to watch me doing all that um, really uninteresting bit. So this is my seamed edge, this side and this side. And then I've done my quarter inch stitching to hold that all in place. And then I'd suggest that you just do some form of quilting. Now I've just done a few straight lines. You might want to do something more elaborate. The quilting might be the feature. Um, so just quilt that piece. So you've still got a couple of raw edges, opposite sides, and two finished edges. So we've got it to that stage now. Wow, that was fast. And then we're going to pop the zip in. So when you look at these these um, pouches, very often when you look at a pouch, if it's a side-on type one, it probably doesn't matter as much when it's just along the top, but the zipper pulls very often from the from this side. So we'll just keep an eye on that because we, it will depend which way we're going to pop it together at the end. So all of these pouches that I've shown you so far are all made the same way as a starting point. So now we're going to pop our zipper in. You may find a couple of pins are handy at this stage just to hold it. So we're going to lay that finished edge that we've got right next to the zipper teeth. Not on top of, not a long way from it, right next to. And then I'm going to go to my sewing machine. You need to have your zipper foot on your sewing machine. And if it's like this one, you'll need to move your needle across so that it doesn't hit the foot when it comes down. You want it to come down into one of those little grooves, but your machine will dictate to you how its zipper foot work because they are some slightly different ones. So I'm off to the machine now and I'm going to do a, a seam, a stitch it very close, maybe an eighth of an inch away from this finished edge. So quite close to the zippered teeth, but because it's sitting next to it, it won't sit right on top of course. Get my pin out and I'm just going to start sewing. And so just keep an eye on that, that it's sitting nicely all the way along, uh, up against the zip teeth. So we're nearly there already. Now I have done a pattern for these little zipper pouches on my website on gourmetquilter.com little zippered pouch from 10 inch squares now I'm going to suggest that you do another row of sewing on top of the very first row of sewing that you had done that was quarter of an inch away from the edge and that's just to help hold the rest of the zipper back in place so if you pop that over the top and just go along right over the top of that same sewing line that you've already done just gives a nice finish to the zipper on the inside. 
And now you think, right, we've done that. That was pretty easy. The next part is a little bit more fiddly, but not too bad. The reason we've got this extending beyond is just to make the next stage much easier. What we want to do now is bring that around and fold that over so you can already see how this is going to work. Now I'm going to suggest that you pin it in place because what we don't want is to have things misaligned at the ends. So we want to pop a little pin to hold that one. We're going to be sewing from the other end this time. Um, you could switch it around and do it from the same end, but most of us logically work the other way, I believe, although it's a hard one to answer that one. And again, the same thing at the other end, so that your ends would be matching with the zipper. So again, this one goes next to the teeth, so the zipper teeth will end up being exposed, is basically the look we're after. I've got pins along there now. And so now to sew that, it's suddenly got a little bit complicated because it's this narrow tube. So this is why we've got the extra length on the end here, because we're going to open the zipper right out, and then we've got much more room to move. So now I can take that to the sewing machine and stitch along close to the edge again, just like we did on the other side, and then back again for that second line of sewing. So a little bit fiddly because this zipper wants to curl around, um, it's a great way of using up unwanted longer zippers that you've had for that project that never quite finished. So I'm going to come in here and stitch again fairly close to that uh, finished edge that we've got that are sitting that are sitting right next to the zipper teeth. And we come along here. I'll just make sure your zipper's staying in nicely there. These make great little gifts, great for storing your threads in, they're really good for keeping chocolate in. I can't think of anything better. Okay, so we've done that first line of sewing. We're going to go back again and do that second line like we did on the other side of the zipper, right on top of that same line of sewing that we had previously done. And as you can see, the zipper wants to be just a little bit fiddly. Here we go. Our zipper already in. That was pretty painless. My threads off. But we have got a little thing going with the zipper being a little bit long. But so now our next decision is going to be which shape we're going to make. Are we going to have a zipper sitting right across the top, in which case it's going to be that shape? Are we going to have it sitting in the middle of a flatter bag, in which case it's going to be that shape? Are we going to have it just flipped over the top edge so that it's a side opening like this one? Or are we going to get really excited and have a look at some other options while we're at it? And here we have other options. How much fun is this? These are all made with this same starting point to the stage that I've got this one here today. So. This one here is made just the same as this one, only that we've done some little paper bag corners inside. So that means that when it's inside out, and we've done the side seams, and I'll show you that in a minute, we would stitch across the little corners to make that nice little base paper bag corner like I've got in, in here. So that's kind of a nice little shape. These would make good anything bags, pencil cases, chocolate bags, oh chocolate bags again. This one exactly the same as this one but again with the little paper bag corners across the bottom so just a slight variation 
This one here is like this one, but again, paper bag corners on each of the four corners. This one here is a bit like this one, only that the zip is taken over to one side more. And this one is very like this one, but with bigger corners taken. So it just makes it a taller bag, or zipper pouch, or pencil case, or chocolate bag. Chocolate bag. Licorice all sort bag. Now this one's a little bit interesting. This one is done so that you would join the seam at one end that way, but the seam at the other end the opposite way, so that you get this unusual shape. I'm not sure what shape that is called. And then to achieve this one, it's exactly the same, only that we've done paper bag corners on these three corners so that they're not so sharp. I actually think that one looks like a slipper. I think you could almost wear that one. So as you can see, lots of fun to be had from a 10 inch square and a bit of batting. So I'm going to quickly finish this one off just to show you how I finish off inside. And I think I'm going to do, I don't know which one, maybe, maybe we'll just get sorted with the zipper first. So in order to do the inside, so you, you want to have your zipper open probably at least two thirds of the way. Because if you have it closed when you turn it inside out and sew it, you actually then can't get it back out the right way again. So I think I'm going to do maybe that flat one. So we, in order to make something like this one, we would need to find the center to pop the center of the zip in. So we might put a pin in there. And we'll do the same at this end so that we've got something to match the zip to. And then we're going to flatten that. So we've got it inside out at the moment. And yes, we've still got lots of extra zip hanging around here, but we're going to chop that off shortly. So if we match the zip to the center where the pin is there, we can pop the pin across to hold it. And we'll do the same at this end so that that zip just meets where the pin is and we can pop maybe a couple of pins because this one is sitting open at this end so you might need a couple of pins just to hold that and then we're going to stitch that seam so initially I'm making it it would end up like this to make it like this we've got the corners so I'll show you that as well now you don't need your zipper foot anymore you just pop your regular quarter inch foot on and remember if you've moved your needle to move your needle back again now we're just going to come across and do this seam so you don't want to make sure there's no little bits caught inside little pleaty bits and start sewing from one end again just your little quarter inch seam is enough coming right across now when you get to the zipper, just go a little bit slower because you don't want to suddenly go clunk on something, but these are nylon zippers which is um, a whole lot easier. The metal zippers can be a little bit harder to do this with because you would have to avoid the teeth much more so. When we get to the zipper we're going to go just slowly, but we're going to reverse back over it and then carry on and that just gives it an extra bit of strength because that's going to be the end of where the zipper goes to. And then on this end, just the same thing, start at one side. And same thing when you're going over the zipper, keep your zipper bits together, but just do your reverse back over there. Make sure that's sitting. And now, because you've done that extra back stitch over the zipper, you can actually just cut that zipper off now. Look at that, pretty scary, huh? But it works. And the other thing I would do at this stage, I would probably neaten those edges a little bit with a zigzag stitch. So I'm going to get my rotary cutter and ruler and just trim off any fluffy bits that are there so that it's a nice edge and we're just going to run over or sew over the edge there with a zigzag stitch. 
so I do need to change my foot again for doing the zigzag because the needle is swinging and that quarter inch foot doesn't work so well with that. Change to a zigzag stitch there. And this just stops it unraveling and getting um, little raw edges and things inside the purse. So that was one end and that's a much neater finish I feel than just leaving these edges raw which will get fluffy with with use and the fabric may start fraying as well. So and because I've remembered to leave the zip open I can now turn that out the right way and have a look and see how I'm feeling about that corners out. Oh look at that, looks like just the right size. For, oh did I mention it fits a bar of chocolate? So there you'd have your flat one. I haven't quite finished pushing the corners out but that's because I think I'm going to pop these little paper bag corners on to show you how to do that. So to do that we want it inside out. with our corners pushed out again and this time we're going to now depending whether you wanted a sort of a flatter one or whether you wanted it to come up higher like this one it's the same thing it's just the amount that you take within the corner so all four corners probably should be the same that probably is a good starting point so you want this seam here to match when you open that corner out with what would be the seam there so that you've got this opened out so that you've got the, the seam going right up the middle to the point and we're just going to sew across maybe uh, three quarters of an inch from the actual point there and we want to be on a straight stitch and so again just do your little the corner thing and now we're going to have to do it on all four corners so if you can see that that's a corner there so when that's turned out you've now got that sort of raised corner so that's quite nice so if you can keep your corners all going this if you because we press the seam down that way try and keep the seam going in the same direction it will just help it sit a little bit nicer so we'll do the next corner these two corners same thing we're going to pop that seam in one direction and sew right across there did I mention that these four bags are quite good for chocolate as I said they will, will be a pattern on my website if, um, if you're not quite sure and want a little bit more information um, but so much fun great as little gift bags in their own right great filled with all sorts of fun things um, great for little appliance type things really it's unlimited what you could use them for and because we use so many of these pre-cuts these days the 10 inch squares and things often you've got the odd one left over it's great to be able to turn it into something fun and useful. So there I've done all my four corners, looks a little bit strange. You could trim those corners off if you wanted to. Uh, when they're any small like that I'll often just leave them inside because I don't feel that they get in the way of anything particularly. If you were going to trim them off I would suggest that you do the little zigzag finish where you cut along as well to stop any fraying. And there, that didn't take long, it was fun. It looks delicious and it's a little zipper pouch made using up some 10 inch squares. I can't think of anything better and oh did I mention they're great with chocolate inside. <laughs>
Oh, I did say that. Have some fun with your 10 inch squares. Thank you.